All right. So you want to know the easy way is launch Siri settings. She didn't used to do this in iOS 6. And All right, so let me show you on the iPad. I hit the gray gear. And then I go to, oh, there's a delay. Come on. Oh, let me redo this. Hang on one sec. Technical error. There we go. All right, we go into general Siri. It's going to catch up in a second with me here. <laughs> wow, that's a big delay. Uh oh. Well, I'm going to show you another thing too here in a sec while we're in Siri settings. So remember, I told Siri to launch Siri settings. So here it is, general, Siri, and then voice gender. There's only two choices at this point. I uh, had a nice English woman come up, a British woman, uh, and she can, you can change it to different languages. Uh, Cantonese, yeah, let's do that. But you can do UK English, you can do Canadian. As I told her, though, be careful when you do that. Because when you say flavor or color, it'll insert a U in it for you. Color, flavor, you know how they always do, the Queen's English. Just kidding. I don't think it will. But uh, the, uh, there's Australian is a male voice, or used to be just a male voice. They don't have male and female voices for everything yet. But when we go back a screen, you'll notice here uh, you can change the actual language too. So if it's a Spanish speaker, they can speak in Spanish, but everything else on their phone stays English. But I want to show you on your phone, you have this thing called Raise to Speak. Who here has a white iPhone I could look at for a second? Here we go. Uh, white face? No. no, I need a white face, sorry. Now I see white iPhone. Can I draw that for a second? Thank you. She doesn't have a verification lock. I just got a free phone. Like those people that ask you to take their picture for them, right? <laughs> On the white device, on the white iPhone, you'll notice the speaker is the little slot. To the, at the top is the camera, and then there's this other little dot here that you can see in the white one. Those of you with a black bezel have that also. That's what's called a proximity sensor. So what a proximity sensor is, and this goes back to the very first days of the iPhone. When you make a call, it senses it's near your ear, and the screen goes dark for two reasons. The screen goes dark so your cheek doesn't inadvertently hit the mute button. Those of you with heavy-duty cases, sometimes if the screen gets a little occluded, it doesn't work. But it also makes it so that the light goes off so you're not using up battery. But what that proximity sensor does with Siri is... If you have raised to speak activated, oh, I have the micro, uh, the headphone hooked up, it won't do it. But what happens is it senses next to you and you can very quietly talk to Siri and she'll read it back to you. Inevitably though, I do it that way. I do that and then I pull it back here and then she goes, you want directions to what bar? <laughs> you know. So if you're gonna wanna hear the results through the built-in, the little speaker, keep it up here. Raise to speak is what that option is in Siri. That's this right here. Okay? That uses that proximity sensor. You can always test your proximity sensor. Be making a phone call and put your hand over the top and your screen will go dark. Okay. That was a good question on how to do the language. Now, biggest complaint... Can't find anything to complain about except for text size. The new text is kind of fine, okay? They forget about us people as we're getting a little older. It's hard to see. So I'm going to show you where in settings you can adjust a few things. I don't encourage you to do it right here now. I just want to show you where it is. 
So on the iPad, you go to Settings, General, Text Size. The new thing on Text Size is that you, you don't choose it. You slide the slider back and forth. Oh, there we go. Slide the slider back and forth for text size. If I go back here, under that is accessibility. There is so much under the hood in accessibility, you won't believe it. If you hit accessibility, I can tell it to voice over. It'll read the screen to me. I can zoom in. You don't really want to do any of that. If you hit invert colors, it won't show on this screen, but if you hit invert colors, you'll see what'll happen. It reverts your screen. Actually, I'll show you right on here. You can see it with this. Invert colors. It reverses the colors. This is great if you're trying to look at something in a very, very bright environment, okay? But down below here, you'll see larger type again. This is an accessibility, but look at bold text. The new Helvetica font is fairly thin. If you want it a little bolder, you select bold, but it's going to prompt you that I need to restart your iPhone or your iPad for that to take hold. And you're welcome to do that. It only takes a minute or two. It's not a full reboot. The other thing you can select is, is increase contrast. That doesn't require a reboot. And I simply increase contrast, and it helps that, that gray on gray kind of look. So those are good features right there. Oh, and you can say reduce motion. That's all this stuff going on because some people said they were getting car sick or motion sickness from iOS 7. I don't know. But anyway, bold text, I do encourage if you're having trouble reading your screen. And you can adjust the text size. That's on both? In iOS 7? I've been able to make some text bold, but there's on the first page with all the boxes, those words are still You mean on this? The home screen? Yes. Those don't change. But, but part of the thing is, is the, they're a little hard to see. So you notice I have a very dark background. So that's helped with that. If you really want it, but remember, we don't have to read the darn things. If we want to launch contacts, say, launch contacts. Get used to using Siri to do what you think you need to see the screen for. Hey, I found this oh, online. Wow. Launch contacts. There's my contacts. So, we talked about Siri and reminders and calendar. I want to talk about notes. Now, not everybody has the ability to have notes. You, it depends on your email provider. So, I'm going to fire up notes on my computer, which, by the way, if I go to reminders, we did some reminders on there. They'll show up. It syncs with my, all of our, my computers. I'm going to fire up notes on all my devices. Come on, reflector. Wow. OK. Whoa, computer's going very slow. I think Reflector is about ready to crash. Hang on one sec. Reflector is this great app I found that allows us to show my iPhone and my iPad on my Mac, which then takes it to the projector. But let's see here what we've got going on. Ah. So I'm going to quit Reflector and restart it. So we're going to lose my screen for a second here. Excuse the brief interlude. There we go. All right, now we got it going. I didn't either. OK, so here's notes. So I've got notes up on all my devices. Now, in the old version of notes, it was 
what they call skeuomorphism. This looks like a pad. Somebody here was walking around with a yellow pad. It looks just like that yellow pad. Notes on the iOS device used to look like that too. In iOS 7, they decided to get rid of skeuomorphism, and you're going to get rid of skeuomorphism in Mavericks when it comes out for your Mac. But what I want to do here is I'm going to take my iPhone. Create a note called shopping list. Okay. Now look at oh, uh, right here, shopping list. And my iPad will have it here in a second. There it is. So there's shopping list. The first line of every note is what the title of the note is. And the most recent note will go to the top. So we've got shopping list. Boy, reflector's not being happy. So now I'm going to say, add toilet paper to my shopping list note. OK, I made the change to your note. So, from my iPhone, from my Mac, from my iPad, my iPod Touch, I can adjust my note. And when I get to the store, I just simply delete the things that I don't want on it. And I've told, had Siri do all that. She created the note. This isn't a reminder, this is just a note, okay? It's not a to-do list, it's a note. And my reflector is really messing up here, so. Unfortunately, at least we saw it there, so add toothpaste to my shopping list note. I have made your note. Boom. Hands free. So that's notes. Works very similar to reminders and everything else. So uh yes? I tell, so the question is, do I tell her notes? I do in this case because I may have a shopping list in my reminders, but more, the more information you can give her, the better. For instance, if you have someone that's a hard name for, to pronounce, if you give the first and last name, she'll know more to check. So the more information you give her, the better. All right. So in this case, I say note because it knows notes. If I say remind me, I don't have to say make a reminder. I say remind me. And for a calendar, I just say schedule. Okay. Question back here? Uh, yeah, my, my oh, sure. companion, uh, last night, so we kind of wouldn't say it the way it recognizes. I would have pronounce it the way we say it. I'll give you an example. I have a, a good friend of mine, and we jokingly, his nickname Schnitzel. <laughs> so what I do is I say, send Schnitzel a text message. Okay, I can send a message to Jerry Shelton for you. What would you like it to say? So I created a nickname in context. You can also say, make that person, make Jane Doe my mother. And then with Siri, you just say, email my mother or call my mother. So she'll do those connections for you too. Because my last name is Smoggy, S-M-A-A-G-E. And if you say Smoggy, it doesn't know what you're talking about. So in the new Siri, if she can go find it, she'll also say, how do you want, excuse me, how do you want me to pronounce that? And so there's some training involved there, and that seems to work pretty well. The other thing is just do the, create a nickname okay. and use the nickname. And that, in that case, Jerry Shelton, I have one client. She has a monosyllabic, monosyllabic first name and second name, Ann Young. It doesn't pick up Ann Young very well because I'm not really giving her enough information. Kathy Williamson on the other time is a good long name, so if it doesn't get Kathy right, it'll at least get the Williamson part. The more information you get, it, the better. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, good question. Yep. So let me tap on shopping list. 
And then fortunately, there we go, it's coming up. So I'm going to hit shopping list. And, yep, I hit the share button. Look on my phone. I hit the, remember this, remember this icon? That does it. So good question on it. Yes, you could share list. You could airdrop it. You don't have to airdrop it to your own device, though, because you're, you're on the cloud. It automatically goes there. But if you wanted to share that with someone else, email, message, or airdrop. Okay? Good point. Um, newest thing in the app, in the apps, if you go to the app store, is local apps. So if you're visiting Yellowstone, you have a setting that says near me. And it will go into the app store because that's pretty appropriate if you're on the East Coast and you want to see, well, there might be specific apps to... Uh, to a hotel you're by or to a, a park or something like that and you just hit near me and it uses your GPS and it says well here's oh show popular apps near me okay so on my iPhone there are some popular apps that are nearby no endorsement of Red Hot Casino there so what was the question no. You can make a Home Depot note. I, so you can have a variety of notes. And some of them are in the Bay Area that they won't come on until I get there. Over there. No, that would be in reminders location based. A note is not location or time sensitive. A note is simply a, that yellow pad. Yeah, all right. But if I went through, if I'm down there, I get notes, then I can see that. I can Correct. See there and, everything and remember, make the title. Make the first line be the title so you can spot it because you have a list of notes otherwise. Right. I mean, I, I will go uh, Safeway or the name of the place I'm going to, you know? Yeah. Or if you're going to Safeway in Sacramento and Safeway in San Mateo, you'd put either San Mateo or Safeway as the title. Just because that's the first thing you see because you see it's a list. Yes, yes. Just to help identify it. Yeah. I do that. I have my Costco list. I have other lists and I just... Yeah. Yeah, I'll put these on. I won't go down for two weeks, but I know when I'm down there, I want to go these places and use the list I want in there. Yep. All right. <clears throat> um, the only other big feature that's changed dramatically in iOS 7 is multitasking. And how you get to multitasking is you double tap the home button, and it brings up this palette. Let me get rid of notes behind here because it's distracting. So when I double tap, I get this bar of my most recently used apps. I can either swipe across on the, oops. I can swipe across on the actual pages of the apps or down on the icons and it goes a little faster. Okay. Now, if I want to quit an app, you do... Old wives' tale. i got to quit all the apps because it's making my battery drain and all this. Even the Apple Store says it. No, it doesn't. Occasionally, you get an app that misbehaves. Like a minute ago, even though it was a Mac app, I had to quit Reflector and restart it. So, if I get an app that's misbehaving and I want to quit it, force quit it, I just... Tap the app and slide it up. Fling it out of the way. And fling it out of the way. Okay? To get to that, you go from your home screen and double tap. And you get your multitasking bar. But the multitasking bar is nice because I can say, oh, I want to go over and I want to go to my Safari. It's right there. So that's why they call it multitasking. When an app is in the background, it's not doing things for the most part. If you have a lazy app developer or some GPS apps and some music apps, may continue to run in the background, but usually you know it. Don't leave like Pandora or iTunes Radio. You might not even have them loud enough that you know it. You're going to drain your battery and you're going to use up a lot of data. So all you do is you flick up. Flick up. Don't tap the home button quickly. Yeah, I'm here. Now you got it. So just don't grab the middle of the app and fling it up. No, 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 you tap it on the app. Double tap. Double tap. Now slide it up. Oh, okay. Anybody else have trouble with that? 
kind of a cool little fling, gets it out of the way. I'm still learning how to touch my screen so it works. I don't use a stylus, and I don't usually recommend it, but those of you, I know I use the square, you use this to sign names, but women with long fingernails have to sometimes go from the side, so it makes typing a little bit tough, because the keyboard's designed for you to peek around your finger to see it, and from the side it makes a difference, but we don't need to type anymore because we have Siri. Here's a great app. I have a stereo at home, and I can turn, turn it on, turn it off, and my home Wi-Fi. All right. <clears throat> How many of us get robocalls and spam calls yes. from the same number? Okay, this will be worth the price of admission today. So, this applies to the phone, obviously. I go to, I'm going to go to my recent call list. And... Ooh, I don't want to block them. But, okay. So, this tip was in the most recent. It's on Facebook, back next to Screw. But if I go here, here's a phone number, okay? If I tap the I to the right of the phone number, I get this. I can add this person. I can create a new contact or add to my existing contacts, which is kind of handy. I can send them a message, I can send them a FaceTime audio, I can call, I can do all that. But look what happens if I move my screen up. Block this caller. Yes. And you won't ever know that person called again. So only do it if you really truthfully want to block that caller. I have a robocall one that comes in. My God, it has freed me so much because I don't worry about it. I had given that caller a separate ringtone. So I knew, oh, God, I don't have to answer that. You know, it only happens when you're up on top of the ladder, kind of leaning over, and then the damn phone rings. So when I heard that tone, I knew I didn't have to answer it. So now I can block it. And it's been so peaceful. Go ahead, Keith. So what does that caller get? Concert ring forever? Or your voicemail? Or what? I don't care. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I would assume they get constant ringing. I would hope they get a, large, a, a loud shrill sound in the other end of their phone, but I don't anticipate that's happening. I think it just rings. It may treat it like a decline call where it instantly goes, but it's not a voicemail or anything. So good question on that. Robert? Let's assume that you block this call, and... Three months down the road, you find out that it's your long lost cousin that's going to give you money. <laughs> you unblock it. I'll have to get back with you on that one. Okay. Because I don't know an instance where I would need that, but I think you can. I think there's a block call list. Offhand, I don't know where it is. So, but good question. Yes. How do you get that special ringtone? How do I get a special ringtone for a special caller? So. If I go, first of all, the caller has to be in my contact. So let me go to a contact. And here's Jesse Hernandez. So I'm going to hit Jesse's phone number with the I next to it. And now I can go down here. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. Oh, I'm sorry. It's in contacts. Launch contacts, Jesse Hernandez. Which app would you like to use? Contact Secret App of Pro. I have a some weird app on there, so let me just go Jesse. There's Jesse Hernandez. And now in contacts, I hit edit. Come on. Demo fail. Uh, wow. Um, anybody know offhand? Can they remember? In, in contacts? Yes. Yes. Edit. Ah, oh, ringtone. I'm sorry. We're going right past it right here. It's because I have a lot of numbers for Jesse. 
So let's, let's go back to the recent call. I believe I can get to it from there now that I know where it is. So if I go to Jesse's phone number, for instance, here. Oh, forget the iPad. Now if I hit edit, I can do it right from the recent calls. There it is. Okay. And you can set custom vibrations, by the way. You can tap your own vibrations. Like you could have, uh, you know, that, 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 that. You can tap in vibrations. It's essentially like creating a custom ringtone. You can do that. Uh, the new ringtones in iOS 7, there's some great ones. I'm not a big ringtone person. I pretty much leave it on what it is, but there's some great new ringtones. And you can always go back in when you go to ringtones. You can go back down, and all the classic ringtones are still here also. Right there. All the original ringtones, the old original iPhone unique one that when that goes, everybody looks around and is trying to grab their phone. So... Um, Practice with your ringtones because a lot of times you want a ringtone that's kind of unique so you can also hear it though. So you do want some loud ringtones. All right, everybody's playing with ringtones. That's quite all right. It's made to do it. Now, um, there's a new thing out. Those of you that have Apple TV, do you know if you have the Apple TV 2 when it first came out, the black one, or the new 3? They look exactly the same. If you have the 3, and if you were to go buy one now, Anybody who set up your Apple TV or had me do it, you know it's such a pain in the butt to use that little remote to go through and put all the passwords in and everything else. And once you get it in, you can turn on home sharing on your phone. But the coolest thing is now in iOS 7, if you have an Apple TV and you're going to uh, program it for your device, you take your phone right up there and tap it, and all your iTunes information and everything else will go right to the Apple TV. So I guess you kind of bump. You're supposed to be within 10 feet, but... They say tap it. It's low energy Bluetooth is what it's doing. Um, I have for you about the name. I have a little thing that I can show you about. So I'd like to, oh, I'd like to answer any iOS questions before we go into a couple key apps. I'm going to just briefly talk on apps. Go ahead, Keith. What is there on iOS 6 that you can't do with iOS 7? Airdrop. Uh, it's Darwinian. <laughs> Adapter die. Um, is there any reason you shouldn't change? So, if you have a mission critical app, I have two apps that are that are critical to me. And before I went to, I, well, I shouldn't. I shouldn't lie. I went to iOS seven as soon as I could. <laughs> Damn the apps. But if you have any mission critical apps, you should check online to see if that app is is one hundred percent compatible with iOS seven before you do it. Otherwise, uh, you know, you're, you're going to have to at some point learn it because if you get a new iPhone, it's going to come with iOS 7. Um, it's been the best. up. It, it's a huge upgrade. And I have heard of so few glitches. It's amazing. It really is a statement to how well Apple did it. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's some differences, but there, and I, and I, I don't want to say there's also a ton of things that are compelling to make you do it. But there are some nicer things, albeit there's some smaller text and things like that. So, and there's some other accessibility features. Go ahead. Uh, you know, you only hear about the bad ones. Like the, a Tesla caught fire the other day. Well, in fact, Tesla's... Tesla's fires per mile is one fiftieth of every single other car out there, and in fact, it turned out the guy hit a big metal post underneath it, and it pole vaulted his car up, and it punched through sixteen uh, one quarter inch steel plate. But what's the media say? You know what? I encounter a lot of people, and I haven't seen any problems. I, on the other hand, of I am of the philosophy: if it ain't broken, don't fix it. But I think going forward, there's going to be some things. But I tell everybody, make sure you have some time when you do the upgrade in case something goes awry and you need to reload it and things like that. Don't do it right before you leave on a big trip. Do it when you have some time because you also, <coughs> excuse me, you also need to spend some time learning the new things. <coughs> excuse me. Like the spotlight and the flicking up. So just spend some time with it and there's great, great tutorials online. Go ahead here and then I'll go back there. Yes, 
Reflector is an app on my Mac that allows me to allows you to view my device oh. on the screen. <laughs> it's a great app if you do presentations like this. Back in the back, and then you. Um, talk, I'm sorry. Uh, on, in order to uh, when you have your iOS settings, you can lock the device and to the Wi-Fi. I don't know what that means. Unlock or lock? Lock. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'll check with that, Billy. But it wants you to be on Wi-Fi, and it also encourages you to be plugged into power because it's a pretty big download. Also, if your phone or iPad is really, really full, it won't do it because it sends a lot into it. You can do it via your computer, but it really wants the Wi-Fi because it's, it's, it's about a gigabyte on the device, and it doesn't want to use all that cellular data up for you. It's, it's, it's saving you from that. In fact, I don't even think it'll let you do it over cellular data. So you got to go to McDonald's or Starbucks or the Apple Store if you want to update it that way. And use iCloud backup first, and let me show you where you can back up to iCloud. I encourage everyone, I always back mine up, and I encourage everyone to my computer if I have iTunes, if I've synced it before, I back it up on my computer, but I also go into iCloud backup, so I go to settings, and I come down to iCloud, and then I scroll all the way down here, and I go to Storage and Backup, and then down here is Backup Now. And the way Backup Now works, it only backs up when it's plugged into power and connected to Wi-Fi, because it doesn't want to be halfway through a backup and burn your battery up. So. When yours, when yours, when you go home, if you have the Wi-Fi logo up here, you're connected to Wi-Fi. It may be, it may be warning you you should be, and if you show your Wi-Fi, so when, whenever you get home, if, and this is very important, make sure you connect your iPhone and your iPad to your Wi-Fi at home, and then when you leave and you come back, you're using your Wi-Fi network at home, and you're not using cellular data, and in fact, it allows it over Wi-Fi to sync with your iTunes and sync and do the updates. So use your home Wi-Fi. If you have any problems with that, you know, give me an email or something like that. But just use your Wi-Fi password here and then back there. You can change the colors of the folders. Change the colors of the folders. I don't think so. But you can now. You used to have a limit. You can put as many things as you want in a folder, and you can put folders and folders and folders and folders. But you know who cares? I just have Siri launch it for me. Again, when you have 867 apps, which is way too many, I'm sorry. I used to think I was a hoarder until I saw one of those shows. I'm just a keeper. Uh, right behind you. So, good question. So her question is, first of all, when you sync it to your computer, it automatically backs it up to your computer if you have it turned on to in iTunes. It backs up the entire thing. If you do iCloud, it backs up the entire thing with the exception of music you've purchased from iTunes and the apps because you can get those again, but it's your photos and everything else. And i got to tell you a little story. It was one of the most heartwarming things for me is I had a client call up, actually neighbor of Barb Effenberger's, and she had an issue with her phone, and the Apple Store reset her phone. Her father had passed away last October. The last videos and photos of her father were on that iPhone and not on her computer. So Apple apologized, but they were no longer on that phone and they were nowhere. Her father was a pianist and he had been singing and playing for her mom. So I kind of, I'm scratching my head and I have to kind of think outside the box on this. And then I found out that she had actually synced it to her computer back in November was the last time. She had never uploaded them to, I, to iPhoto, though. You know, you have to fire up iPhoto and upload them. She didn't have PhotoStream. And she'd, in fact, updated her phone since then. So she has a phone that doesn't have it. And I, I said, well, OK, what I've got to do is completely delete the phone she has in the phone. Well, first, I backed up this phone. The, the today version of the phone. And I went back in and I said, let's restore from the backup last November. 
And I went into iTunes and said restore. It brought in all the photos, all the videos that she had missed. And I immediately synced it with iPhoto. They do the right thing. They have two Time Machine backups. We backed it up to Time Machine, made sure everything was there. And then I said, okay, she wants what was on her phone five minutes ago back on it. So I then deleted everything on her phone and did a complete restore and brought back what she had there. Obviously, the videos and things weren't there, but they were in iPhoto, so we could bring them back in the phone if we wanted. And that was, to me, one of the most fulfilling things I've done because it was very, very special, and Apple couldn't figure out how to do it for her. So, But the key there was she did ha at least have a backup to the computer at one point, and iCloud will back up the photos you have in your device. So there was a question back here. Yeah, um, there's a caveat on this when, um, when you activate um, iCloud, it says it will no longer automatically sync to the computer. Mm -hmm. But you go back into computer and iTunes and say, it'll say it's doing iCloud, then just sync it to the computer. Or on the left-hand side when your phone's plugged in, control, click on it and say backup iPhone or backup iPad, and it'll just back it up, even though you're syncing it with the cloud. It doesn't want to do both because it doesn't want you to get duplicates, and that's become less of an issue these days. Thank so, you. okay. And I think we had one over here. Go ahead. Then I'll go over here. So the albums actually come from your iPhoto in your computer. So to go, we, we're going to get in the weeds if we go too far into iPhoto, but in fact, it's synced. The albums come over from your computer. They don't really exist. They, they didn't get generated on your phone. The only thing on your phone is camera roll. So it's a weird situation, but we'll, that's a, it's, it's, it works really well, but it's a special, it, there's a special way to get it done. Al? The folders. Yeah, can you change it? Right. It, the opaqueness changes with what's behind it. Like if it's white, it'll do it. So that's a great point. So that's a good user interface thing. So thank you. Right here. Oh. <laughs> well, no, mine was the other question, except for the iPad, it no longer backs up the computer automatically when you sync with iTunes. But that just has to do with iTunes. iCloud. Yeah, but I mean, it's you no longer sync to iTunes. Right. And, and it's saying you're doing it just here, but yeah, you can still do it. No, no, no. It's just, a, it's, it's basically so you don't get redundancy. And going, I mean, the beauty of having it backed up to iCloud is. If you go get a brand new device or your device gets lost or stolen, you go in and you log into your Apple ID, by the time you get home, everything's on there. But it's just because many people are not using a computer anymore. My mom has an iPad and she doesn't have a computer. No, no, it's, 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 just, it's just referencing iTunes, though. It's, then it's syncing. It's because of the cloud on that. That's You can adjust those settings, and that's really more... Everybody can have their own set on that, but it's so you're not going to get duplicate songs. And like somebody pointed out, they say they don't have their songs. I think it was you don't have it on the iPhone, but it's got the name of the song and a little cloud thing on it. What that means is you've purchased that song from iTunes at one point. You can download it. I had a client who, Ken, I don't want those on there. They're not on there. They're just pointers that you have those in iTunes if you want them. I don't want them on my phone. I don't know why. It wasn't like a bad name of a song or anything. I don't know why I'm on here. They're not on there. It's a title saying, hey, you've purchased this. If you want to download it to this device, you tap the cloud in it. So, Yeah, exactly. I forget I bought apps sometimes, so I go to the app store. It says open, which means I already have it on my phone. So, All right, uh, iOS questions, any other on there? Okay. Uh, I'm going to, go ahead. You can still do the sync with the iTunes, the cable. Or it can be done via Wi-Fi if you check it. But your device has to be plugged into power at the same time. It doesn't have to be plugged to the computer. The question was, can you, do you have to use the cable? No, not anymore. Barbara? Um, yes, and you can look at the bottom. It'll tell you when you backed up last. Like there at 7.04 this morning. So I was at home on my Wi-Fi, and it was plugged into power. So at 7.04, it got backed up. Not while I've been here. All right, now there's lots of apps out there. When the iPhone, so the iPhone first came out, 
June 29, 2007, it just had the built-in apps. There wasn't an app store. Then a while later, the second version of the OS, which the phone's only been out since 2007 and we're on the seventh iteration of the iOS, in between there, between the original iOS and, or they called it iPhone software back then, they, uh, they developed the App Store. Apps are amazing. You guys saw that video in the beginning. Those were apps. Apps are easy for the developers to build, and they're incredible. And in the beginning, for about the first two months, I knew every app that was out. And then there just got to be too many, and it's like, I give up. I mean, I surrendered. I can't, you know. So there's sites that can tell you, like I do an invoicing app, and so I went and I Googled what's the best invoice app for the iPhone, or what's the best one for this. Word of mouth. I mean, there's so many different avenues. Apple is really working on this discovery process so you can find out how you can find good apps. So that's going to be in the future. And I think in the not too distant future, you're also going to be able to have apps on your Apple TV. We already have a few, but I mean apps, like game, gaming apps. And don't ask me about gaming apps because uh, I would be, I can't do games because I would, do, I would lose my life. I just would get too involved. So I don't, I don't game and I don't know games. So, um, but if we go through the built-in apps, messages, now, that uses the messaging service, which is iMessage, so you don't, have to, you don't have to pay a cell phone fee. And in fact, from your Mac or your iPad, you can send messages to people. If it's on your phone, if you've ever noticed the messages are blue, if it's to somebody that has, Patrick has an iPhone. <laughs> ah, see, some of these are green. That means they went as a regular text message. So green is a text message over your cell carrier. Blue means it went as an iMessage. Okay? Correct. And you would incur if your provider, cell provider, charges you for text or you have a certain number of texts, it would be one of those. Yes? Well, you have to make sure iMessage is on, but it's probably, it could be the recipient, too. Oh, that's so. something I have turned on. No. No, what it is, so iMessage, the blue ones, go over the internet data where the green ones go over the cell data. So they're attached to a cell call where iMessage goes over the internet, but it doesn't have to be on Wi-Fi because your iPhone will connect to the internet wherever you are. So it's using the data part of your cell plan rather than the text part of your cell plan. It's a little confusing, but this is the camel's nose under the tent. It's making the cell carriers ubiquitous. So, but uh, if we go through the apps here again, photos, there's a new way to browse photos. You gotta spend some time with it. It's kinda neat, because it'll even take your photos and put them together by where you were at the time if you take them with your iPhone. And by the way, does anyone know what the best camera in the world is? Exactly. And what one do you have with you most of the time is the iPhone. And your iPhone has a much better camera than your iPad, but oh, I was up in Alaska and those sea otters were, she was leaning way over the boat with a big full-size iPad and I was just waiting for her to drop. Now, the water was a little cold or I probably would have dove in if she'd have dropped it, but not for her, but I would have got it. But it's, the iPhone has a fantastic camera. The new iPhone 5S has dual flash. It's got a white or a yellowish and a blue flash, and it has up to a thousand settings, so that it makes a very good white balance when it uses the flash. Who cares when you're using it for a flashlight, when you're using it for a flash for that. And the camera on the iPhone 5S is dramatically improved for indoor light situations. So the iPhone always has a better camera than the iPad. Uh, we're gonna go into Maps. This to me is the most useful feature on the iPhone. But Ken, I've heard in Australia it sent people off a cliff and all this. Well, that came out about Apple Maps, and yes, it was true. It misdirected people, but so did Google Maps, so did TomTom, Tom, and so did Garmin. But what made the news? Apple Maps is bad. Uh, I've had it be wrong three times. And one time I should have listened to it because it was giving me directions to a barbecue that a friend of mine and I went to and... I wish we hadn't gone to the barbecues. It wasn't very good. So it put me on the other side of the freeway. So Apple Maps is fantastic, and it's gotten better. 
But forget going in and doing all this other stuff. Just say, give me directions to Sacramento International Airport. And it will give me voice guided turn by turn directions as long as you have a 4S or newer. Now, so that's my route. Let Starting me, route to Sacramento International Airport. Coming through here. Head north on Android Way. Okay, so if I, this is new and I used to have it so I would see the ETA and stuff. That's how when I call people up, hey, I'm going to be there in three minutes, I'll know exactly what it is. But if I tap the screen, it gives me the other information on my screen and then I tap it and go back. But I can say things like, How long till I get to my destination? You should arrive in about 26 minutes. Find in and out Burger on my route. Yes. This restaurant along your route in and out Burger is a little ways from you. <coughs> Did I go into maps? Did I do any of this other stuff? So I can say I want to go to Anna's house. And you might, with Anna, you might need to do a last name or something, but, yeah. Yeah. That's not the short name. Okay, so I definitely understand. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to go to mom's house. If you've told it, mom is in your contacts. Okay. So, I can also say, give me directions to the nearest Apple store. Like we need to know how to get there from here, okay? <laughs> there it is. Oh, it's refreshing. Sorry, this thing's a little slow. So you heard it. Um, clear. Uh, I can also see real-time traffic, and unfortunately the screen's not refreshing. There it goes. So this was still doing, it's still getting me direction to the Apple Store. It's, it's this weird, I think it's the Wi-Fi. But uh, I can also say things like, find the nearest sushi restaurant. Okay, one of these sushi restaurants looks fairly close to me. I sorted them by distance. So she sorted them by distance. So I said, where's the nearest? Find the best sushi restaurant nearby. Okay, one of these sushi restaurants looks fairly close to me. I saw it in my rating. And that's the Yelp rating. So the I'm not sure on that. Well, find the least expensive sushi restaurant nearby. If I were Siri, I would... I would sushi restaurant, Japanese restaurant looks pretty close to me. If it, if it were Siri, I would say, you know, you really don't want the least expensive sushi restaurant. <laughs> since, <laughs> since, <laughs> since it's fresh fish. <laughs> oh, I like that, though. That's fine. And I didn't know that, so that tried it. So, so okay. Um, Keith, you had a question? Okay, two parts to that question. Apple Maps, by far, hands down, is better than Google Maps because of the interface and everything else. It is slick. And the fact that Siri interacts with it really makes the difference. Google Maps doesn't interact with Siri. But if I go to Google Maps, which I have next to it, and believe me, Google Maps has gotten worse. Uh, MapQuest, MapQuest for mobile is not a very good one, but it was the first one to offer free voice guided turn by turn direction on your iPhone. So, so interesting. So in Google Maps, well, there's a huge delay. I'm going to restart. Reflector again, sorry. It's the only way you can see. I mean, now we're delayed so bad here between the two things. It's it's bringing, still bringing up sushi. All 
All right, we're back on with him. So, yeah, that's a better response. Um, in Google, when I fire up Google Maps, I have a search box up here, and I can tap on that, and of course I get a microphone and I can say, sushi nearby. And then, there, so I can search for that. But it's not Siri, it's just simple dictation. There is a Google search app, and let me show you that, because it's actually quite useful. Um, launch Google search. Oh, actually, wait, wait here. Searching Google for Black. <laughs> so, if you'll notice, in the Google search app, You've got a voice button. Find good sushi nearby. There are several listings for good sushi. So you can't hear it because it's coming through this thing, but it does the same thing on Google Maps. But the interface is so good. I can ask Siri how much farther. There's also a couple things that there's an app out there called Twist, T W I S T. I can, if I'm going somewhere, I can say, in Twist, I can say, send this person a text message with my current location and update them every so often as I go. So you don't have to, hey, my traffic's bad. I'll be there in three minutes. Oh, gosh, well, now it stopped the other way. I had to do a detour. I'll be there in 15. So Twist is an app for that that's quite good. But the Apple Maps is huge. We went through music. One of my favorite apps, so is this on the maps? Go ahead. Yes. Have you, up, have you tried it in iOS 7? Um, no, not yet. Try, try it again. And you got you to understand there's a tremendous amount of data. And Apple gets their data from TomTom. Tom. And now they're doing some of it on their own. But TomTom Tom is one of the largest providers of data for GPSs out there. So, huh? Yeah, but it, and it, you have it built into your car. So what's going to happen is... Two years from now, you're gonna they're gonna want to charge you about two hundred and fifty dollars to update your maps in your car. Oh, that's good. Great, that's a good setup. So use it if it's what works for you. Um, I haven't had trouble with it. I had three instances, and I use it all the time. So one thing I did a fix, and you can actually, if there are problems, there's a place on the map that says submit a problem. They have people working on it. They want it better. But the, and the, the thing is, is that's good feedback because if you tell it that way, it's going to improve it. Like I had, I did a suggestion because if someone's in my address book and I say, give me directions to their house, you know, I may have only been to this house one time before. And when I'm pulling up, it says, arrived at Jane Doe's house. But since I don't know exactly which it is, I said, you know what, it should tell me what the street address is as I pull up. And now in the new maps, it does as I pull up. It says, arrived at Jane Doe's house, 123 Main Street, which is really helpful because then you, it says it's on the right or whatever, but, you know, that pin is never perfect. It's getting better all the time. There is a, I go and take sunrise and sunset photos out by Mather Lake or by the old back entrance to, uh, to uh, Mather and uh, the golf course, and there's a road that goes along, it's Eagle's Nest, Zinfandel becomes Eagle's Nest and all of a sudden it becomes dirt road before it gets all the way over and becomes Kiefer out by the rendering plant. Inevitably, when I'm out there taking pictures, I hear cars go, they're coming up, and they're going real fast, and then they get to this big Jeep trail, dirt road, and they're flying off, and I go, yep, they've got some sort of GPS they're depending on because every GPS I've checked tells people to go that way, and you don't want to because it is pretty bumpy, so I just kind of... It's humorous. I should have my video camera out and ready. Let's let's show you that. So if I go here, and so by the way, in Maps, if I hit this arrow right here, it'll zoom into where I am. And now I'm just going to go up here, and I'm going to say, actually, here's my house. So it'll say, give me directions to my house. So I hit directions in the upper left. And hit route or route. 
And, ah, so it, notice I have some alternative routes. Okay? And in the new one, it shows you the time of those subsequent routes. So I tap on this one, and now it changes to that. I have another choice down here, which probably today, since it's the air show, I wouldn't want to go that way. So. But you can't make up your own route. No, but in Mavericks, you'll have Apple Maps in Mavericks, and you can create your route like multiple point destinations, and you'll be able to share that to your iOS device. So, question? Yeah, so, so here's what happens. Maps uses a slight amount of data. In your case, with the, uh, with the touch, he doesn't have a cellular connection. He doesn't have a Wi-Fi spot in his, in his car. You should get a Freedom Pop free Wi-Fi hotspot you can carry with you anytime. Freedompop.com, whole different thing. But if you put the directions in while you're on Wi-Fi, well, wait a minute, yours doesn't have GPS in it. He can take a snapshot of the screen, and Google Maps allows you to download, but the other thing is if you use it a lot, you can get standalone navigation <coughs> systems, but the problem he has is it won't follow him because he doesn't have a GPS. But yeah, a snapshot would work, and you can zoom it in and save it to your role. So does everybody know how to make a snapshot of their screen? The sleep wake button's on the top. The home button's right here. If I click them both. Yep. Yep, at the same time it'll take a snapshot. But see, your, your thing is interesting because on an iPhone, for instance, if I'm out of cellular range, it will still direct me the way I've done it. I've done on my iPad, you know what, you can try this because I've done it on my iPad. I have no cellular connection on my iPad and I put the map in ahead of time and as long as I don't deviate from the route, it will give me voice guided directions on the route and I'm not connected to the internet but don't make any changes. Yeah. But the problem, and leave Wi-Fi on because you don't have a GPS, but what happens is it uses a thing called Skyhook and it knows the location of other Wi-Fis nearby without connecting to those Wi-Fis and plots your route somewhat accurately. Okay? So, but standalone GPSs will work, but again, not for yours so much because you really don't have a GPS built in. Uh, in your case, like old phones would work that aren't on service, you know, somebody that's retired their phone. Yeah. Well, it won't have Siri. Somebody sell them with 4S for, for 300 bucks. All right. Oh, yeah. Got it. There was another question over here. Thanks for the, the thing on snapping the maps. You know, and it's really weird. I, had, I didn't have my iPhone one day, and it was like, some, or no, my phone, there was something weird about my phone. I was like, oh, God, how do I get directions to somewhere, you know? And it's, I've become so dependent on it. It's great. Um, maps were huge. App Store, oh, probably one of my most used apps is called Mint. Mint. M-I-N-T, and there's a website called mint.com. Now, it's bank information, but it's very safe and secure because no transactions can happen. But it's a snapshot. How many times do you go to your bank website, you got to log in with your, your ID, and you do all this, and then the server decides to go down and all this. In Mint, you configure it and give it your bank credentials. It's totally free. Like I have my business account is on here and I pay a monthly fee because it's a business account and it'll come up and say, you know, if you've got an Ing, Ing uh, account, you wouldn't have a monthly fee and just little things like that is all you get. It's not really bugging you a lot. It's owned by Intuit and it's a trusted connection to the bank. So if you look on the screen here, it's coming up slowly. It shows you, you can do cash flow, you can make, you can make uh, account balances or you can make budget, excuse me, 
But I can go into my transactions and if I go here and if I go to my business checking account, I can see what my most recent transactions are. Plus, it was funny, I had lunch at Sierra View Country Club for Empower Mac and I paid for the lunch with my card. Let's go to that one. And it was lunch, but it calls it a gym because it's a country club. So I can change that category to food, alcohol, coffee shop, grocery, restaurant. And it's changed that category. You can also enter, so this will do any checking transactions, any credit card transactions, and you can enter cash transactions on it if you want. And you go to mint.com and you can always get a spreadsheet of all your stuff. When I do my taxes, I just go ahead and can go right here and I can see everything in one spot. And it's completely free and it's very secure because no one sees my account numbers and no one can, no one can do any transactions. You can't make withdrawals, you can't do anything. It's simply peering in and looking at your thing and it uses a trusted me intermediary. There's a place in between that transact, that, that sees, they see the bank and then uh, Mint sees that, but Mint never sees the bank, so to speak. Does, does one Mint application go to various banks, I've got Heritage, Wells Fargo, and Chase, and the Chase card on here, and you can do investment accounts, you can link it to whatever you want. And it's, it's great because I also set alerts. If I all of a sudden have a withdrawal over $500, it does an alert and says, hey, you just had a withdrawal over 500, so you know to go check it right away and see. Oh yeah, that's it. So Costco's always put their address, so it's always weird when you see a Costco transaction. It says the address. Oh, that was Costco. And actually, PG&E just changed theirs. I went to my bank. It's like, what's this Web PG and spelled out Web Webcand or something? And PG&E changed how they bill or how they show up on statements like that. So it was really, and the bank's been getting tons of calls. So Mint. Mint is very special and very cool. Um, so as far as apps go, you know, Game Center, or Passbook. Passbook is an incredible app that uses other apps. If you use Delta or United and you've booked a flight, not Southwest yet, and you've booked the flight, you tell the app, your, your boarding pass will be in the app, but it will show up in your passbook. I don't have anything in my passbook, I don't think. But as I get to the airport or it's about time for my flight, all of a sudden my United Airlines boarding pass will show up in passbook because it senses I'm near there. Now passbook is just going in and reaching into these other apps and getting it. You can work at your Starbucks, different things like that. That's going to be expanded in the future and that's going to be fantastic. <laughs> Uh huh. And TSA will take it. It's, it depends on the airline. Right now, uh, Delta, United. Anybody know anybody else yet? American? Huh? Aerolingus. Aerolingus. Yeah. See those Irish? They're ahead of it, man. That's because Apple has a lot of money parked in their banks over there in Ireland. <laughs> so, yeah. So what it is is these couriers keep flying back and forth with all this cash and. Getting their trips paid for, right? Did you? How much? Did you take a lot of cash back and forth for Apple? Get your trip paid for? You know what? You can't talk about it. It's, you're under a non-disclosure agreement, right? So uh, that's Passbook, and that's how. And you know, there other things like Google Translate. So Launch Translate. I've got many of them. This has been around since the very beginning. Ah, fantastic. So, I can say something, this isn't Siri, and I can say, where is the nearest train station? And it says it in Spanish, and you can't hear it because it's through this, but when I hit this mic, this little speaker, it reads it back in up to 85 languages. Or I can say something, I can try to say something in Spanish, say, Uno más cerveza, por favor. Oh, it shows up there. What well, says one more beer here? 
one more beer, please. And then I say, sorry, it's because it's using it, it's because I'm on a headphone jack and through this, so sorry. Anyway, Google Translate, it's free. It's very, very good. Also, the regular Google search app, if you take a picture of a barcode, it'll tell you what it is. You're in the store, you can shop with that. Also, these little QR codes, these weird little things. Take a picture with Google search app, not your, in your thing, it's just Google app called Google search. Uh, Al, you always have some good apps. Gail, you have some good apps. You got any you want to share with us? That uh-huh. And what was that app? I bought a I B O T T A. Okay. And also like the Target app will show you where in Target a certain thing is, what shelf and everything else. You know, we're getting to where, you know, as Lowe's and Home Depot are getting like that too. So it's really good. Any out, anybody else got Billy? Hang on, hang, hang on, hang on. I can't, I can't hear you. Hang on. It's just tar oops. Geez, we did lose it. Okay, Billy, go ahead. Evernote is a note-taking app. It's quite good. Uh, Evernote allows you to attach receipts and different things, and it's really just kind of a, I hate to call it just a note-taking app because it really does do a lot of things, a tremendous lot of things, and it's very good. Pete's done some Evernote classes before, and he'll continue to do them, I'm sure. So we had one over, you had one? What's another app? Flickr. Flickr is owned F L I C K E R. I'm sorry, no E, C K R. It's owned by Yahoo, and with ads, you get a free terabyte of space. And the best part is, it uploads your full size photo. So it really kind of gives you off-site storage. I post my photos there when I do my sunrises and sunsets and stuff. Uh, it's linked at my website, but uh, Flickr is great. And like I say, they upped it so you get a terabyte for free, but the people that go to your site will see a few ads. Dropbox has got some limitations, and it's not great for viewing, but Dropbox is for photos. But other than that, Dropbox, and that's per Dropbox is, I can't believe I forgot it. Dropbox is fantastic. Um, they're totally different things. Dropbox is a folder on your computer that becomes on the web that comes down to here. And Dropbox is like, I can send anything to Dropbox and have it on any of my devices. Or like you guys, you guys are using it because Mary has a PC and Keith can put folders in his Dropbox and Mary can pick it up on her PC or at work even. So Dropbox, great call. I can't believe. I, it just works in the background for me. I don't even think of it as an app because it works fantastic. Uh, another one, Quick Office is out. Uh, Quick Office allows you, it's free. Uh, Google owns it now. It allows you to open Word, PowerPoint, Excel. But also, anytime you get a new Apple device from a few weeks ago forward, Pages, Keynote, Numbers will come free on that device. If you've already paid for it, you got it. But otherwise, it's going to come free on Apple devices and we can now go to, if we go to iCloud.com, on a PC, a Mac, whatever you want, you have, I'll log in with my Apple ID. You now can do pages, numbers, and keynote within the browser. So here's pages. The only thing you don't get is the instant alpha that we get with the regular pages. But this allows you to collaborate with people on a document. But more than anything, you'd, you build it in pages. You can export it as a PDF or you can export it as a Word document. Or even from here, you can import a Word document somebody sent you. Do it all online on a computer 
not on your iOS devices. On your iOS devices, you'd need the app. So there was another one coming. Go ahead. This is an iMac for that I still miss the old um, iCard. I love the uh, iCard app. It was really nice. Mm -hmm. So I still miss the old iCard. You know, I don't do any cards like that, so I would, again, Google it, see the sites, maybe somebody knows of a good card app for, like, doing postcards, that kind of thing, yeah, so. Yeah, the, that, you can do letterpress cards within iPhoto, which is pretty good, and those are really nice. And if you use iPhoto much, I'll tell you, the books, they're just gorgeous, so. So here's Pages Documents, for instance, so. Yeah. Al, you had another one? Oh, yeah. So I just fired up one document I had here, and this is a pages document. I can send it as a pages document, a PDF, or a Word document right within Safari. I didn't fire up pages on my Mac. Okay? Oh, right. So those are your photographers. It's an SD memory card that you put into your camera, and when you're on Wi-Fi, it uploads your photos for you. But does yours have the geolocation too? Some of them have geolocation, which is great because, like the iPhone, it tells you where you are. What I do, I, I, my iFi card is too small. I have an older one. But what I do now when I go out and take photos, I also make sure I take my iPhone out and take a picture of where I am because it time stamps it and it location stamps it. So in other words, when I bring those into iPhoto, I can say, oh yeah, I was at this location at this time, and then I can remember where I was. And I don't make that photo real critical, but I do do it as an add-on to it. Oh, another app I really, really, really like, speaking of photography apps, is called 360 Panorama. Now, we have a great panorama app built into the iPhone. It's fantastic. We also, if you have an iPhone 5S, you now can do slow motion video with it. And it takes 120 frames a second. And the cool thing is each one of them is full resolution. So if you have somebody jumping, you can pick out which of those photos you really want, or you can watch slow motion video. But 360 Pano allows you to do a full 360 degree panorama and for free, you upload it to the occipital site, and in there, they have a viewer when you're in a browser, and you get to pan the whole thing. But the reason I really like it is when I was at Arches National Park, I was sitting up on a bluff on a knoll, and I wanted to do a 360, and the sun was so bright, I couldn't see my screen. So as I went to be able to go to my next photo all the way around, yeah, I heard the click, so I knew I could progress. So 360 panorama. So, yeah. And I don't know if you all are aware, but on your there's a new the new photo app on the iPhone is a different interface. You have to slide across to get to video and to get to slow mo, and the screen will eventually do it. And then come on back. You just slide across. <coughs> we'll go to regular photo. You can also do square for Facebook posting and stuff. It doesn't give you a big landscape app. But I want to point out something. If I take my camera and I point it at those bright, that bright screen over there, you'll notice it senses that. But now it's too dark for here and it senses here. You can lock in the focus and the exposure. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lock in on that over there by double tapping, boom, boom. Do you see that come up? Now it's locked. When I go here, it's too dark. Okay, so let's lock in over here at this. Boom, boom, boom. Now that's light and it's actually overexposed here. You press and hold and it becomes what's called autofocus automatic exposure lock. Okay, and then you just tap it and it only holds for that one photo. So it's uh, because there's challenging light situations, but that's one of the beauties of the iPhone cameras is they're really good in bad light situations. So if you haven't voted, go vote. Any other questions before we break up? Because we're pretty much, go ahead. It's more of a comment. If, I don't know how many of you were trying to get out of debt or stay out of debt or not, not use credit cards. We went to Fry's and tried to drive to buy a phone in their at and area. And they don't accept uh, cash only. 
they, they said, you have to have a credit card. And I said, I don't. My cash is good. Cash is good. I'm not mad. And they tried to explain it, explain it saying prize policy is that people buy a phone of the cash for $100 or whatever. And then they go home and sell it. Mm -hmm. And then we don't get our $600 over the two years. It, it's not them. It's the carrier, actually. But, so I went over to the AT&T store. They know me. <laughs> yeah. I, I gave them cash. But I was really upset. And I don't well, know. and they've checked your credit already. And they won't do that if you don't have decent credit because the phone you're buying for $199, AT&T paid $650 to Apple for that phone. Yeah. They really did. That's why you pay $50 tax. So you're getting it with a, a subsidy, so you pay the 199 But that's more of a problem with that. The guy probably didn't explain it really well. Because Fry's, Fry's isn't the one going to take the hit on that. The carrier will. Because yeah, it's, com it's a commitment. I they knew me. <laughs> yeah, no, that's... And you have a good relationship with them. Yeah. Thank you very much. Very, very, very often. The videos will be at kenspencer.com. Use Siri and all you want. Thank you. Thanks for your tips. Thank you. You kind of sold me on the S. Maybe I can return this. How many days ago did you get it? Last night. Oh, yeah. you can. Who'd you get it from? Uh, T-Mobile. I paid cash. 550 so. You know, T-Mobile, oh, no, Virgin's discounting it. So it would be 100 more. Can I ask Hang on one sec, I gotta stop our video.